This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. All right, let's look at a few more techniques. Uh, the first of which being, um, if you look at paragraph eight, uh, sensitivity analysis. Um, and to explain, or in fact to remind you, because I think you should have seen it before, but to explain now what we're talking about, look at exercise four. Harry is about to consider a new business opportunity. Uh, based on his current estimations, the opportunity looks profitable. Forecasted sales revenue, 30,000 a year, based on 1,000 units sold. His accountant has estimated fixed costs of 15,000 a year. And the variable costs per unit are likely to be $10 per unit. Uh, a. Confirm on the above figures that it is profitable. So that shouldn't take us a moment. Um, sales revenue, 30,000. Um, the variable costs is $10 a unit. There are 1,000 units, so 10,000. And the fixed costs, 15,000. And so uh, the profit per year is what? 5,000. So yes, it is, that does appear to be profitable. Except of course, those are all estimates. That's assuming we do sell a thousand units. If we sell more, and fairly obviously more profitable, if we sell less, less profitable. Um, it's assuming we sell at $10 a unit. It's assuming fixed costs will be 15,000. Sorry, we're selling at $30 a unit. Uh, the variable costs are 10. They're all assumptions or forecasts. And the problem is, of course, if any of those turn out to be wrong, then Sales volume, for instance, if we sell more, then we're going to be more profitable. That's no problem. If we sell less, we'll be less profitable. We'll still be profitable, though, if we only sell a bit less. But if we sell a lot less, then, of course, we could become loss-making. So what sensitivity is in part B is looking to see what percentage change in any of the variables can we afford before we start making a loss. And let's look at them one by one. Firstly, the selling price. Our selling price, uh, remember it was a thousand units, and so for total revenue of 30,000, we must be expecting to have a selling price of 30. Well, assuming everything else is certain, by what percent can we afford that 30 to change before we start to make a loss? The break even would be when we made no profit, no loss. And although I can give you a rule, see the logic, you see if that, if that uh, price per unit, if it fell by, let's say, 10%, the total revenue had fall by 10%. 10% of 30, it had fall by 3,000. If everything else stays fixed, the profit would fall by 3,000. Well, to get to a profit of zero, we can afford the, the profit to fall by 5,000. The only thing that's going to change is that 30. And so the sensitivity will be 5,000 over 30,000 as a percent, which is 5 over 30. 16.67%. And think it through, check you're happy with the logic, because the others then can become automatic. So you see, if the 30 fell by 16.67%, and we still sold 10,000, a thousand rather, uh, then the total revenue at fall by 16.67%. 16.67% of 30,000 is 5,000 we'd end up with a profit of zero. 
So any smaller drop and we are still profitable, any larger drop and we're loss making. And strictly we should put a sign against it. It's minus 16.67 because I'm only worried if the sales price falls. Obviously if the sale price ends up being higher then we make even more profit, there's no profit. In a similar way, two, the sales volume. Um, this time, everything else is fixed, but it's just the sales volume that we're worried about changing. Well, what will be affected? If the sales volume changes, then obviously the sales revenue changes, but so too, well, the variable costs. We're uh, expecting a thousand units revenue at 30 and variable costs a thousand at 10. Well, fixed costs will stay the same, but the total revenue, the total variable costs will both change. Or oh, the contribution, surely. The contribution is 20,000. It's that 20,000 that will change. 10% fall in volume, there'll be a 10% fall in the contribution. The total fall we can afford again to get to a profit of zero is 5,000. The item that's changing is the contribution of 20,000. And so in percentage terms, we can afford again to fall, so it's negative, by five divided by 20, which is 25%. I know it should, I hope you get it getting automatic. What about number three? Uh, the total variable costs. Well, the variable costs on their own are 10. If they were the only things that were changing, which means, therefore, the variable cost per unit was unsure. Well, if you're unsure about the variable cost per unit, at the moment, it's 10,000. We can afford it to change by up to 5,000. So 5,000 as a percentage of the thing that's changing is 50%. And this time, of course, uh, we're only worried if variable costs go up. If variable costs get lower, the profit gets higher. And again, I probably shouldn't need to, but you see, we've got 1,000 we're expecting a thousand at ten dollars, but if the variable costs went up to fifteen dollars, fifty percent, the total would be fifteen thousand. The profit would be zero. Now, finally, the fixed costs. Again, we can afford the final profit to change by five thousand. The fixed costs they are currently estimated at fifteen thousand. And so in percentage terms, they can change by 5 over 15, 33%. And plus minus, well plus, it's only if the costs increase that the profit falls. So there we are, I hope a simple enough exercise. Um, C says comment on the results. I appreciate the significance and the problems with sensitivity analysis. First of all, <coughs> the smaller the sensitivity, the more worried we are about that particular factor. So in this case, it's the selling price that's most sensitive because that only has to change by 16% before we start making a loss. Whereas, what was number three? Variable costs would have to go by 50%. So the smaller the sensitivity, the more worried we are. And as a result, we'd perhaps put more work into checking how likely our estimate is to be correct. Uh, here, the, they all need to change by a fair bit. But you see, if you've got something where the sensitivity was only 2%, a tiny change would mean it was unprofitable. So you put a lot more work trying to uh, see, you know, how accurate is our estimate likely to be. And in fact, if the sensitivity was very small, you might even decide not to even take the risk, even though it looks as though it should be profitable. 
All right, well, that's sensitivity analysis. Uh, let's, in this lecture, let's just do one more. Ch um, paragraph nine um, is about standard deviation. And the point here, thinking back to expected values, just very quickly, suppose I gave you a choice of machines. There was one machine which was either going to give you a profit of 8,000 or a profit of 10,000. And another machine was going to give you either, ooh, 5,000, no, let's make it more extreme, 3,000 or 15,000. And suppose the probability in each case was 0.5. If the probability of the high or the low was 0.5, then A would give you an expected return of 9,000. Whereas B, if it was the same probabilities, that would give 9,000 as well. So on pure expected value terms, you'd be indifferent between the two. Both give the same average expected return. But of course, they're not quite the same. Because A, obviously, it may be 10, it may be 8, it may be higher, it may be lower. That's what the risk is. It may be higher, it may be lower. Similarly, B. But B, it may be a lot higher, it may be a lot lower. Now, uh, we can't say which is better, which is worse. We've been through different attitudes to risk in the earlier lectures. But it would be nice if we could measure, to this extent, the risk, i.e. if we could have some sort of measure as to how much higher, how much lower. You know, B is obviously a lot higher, lower than A, but uh, it's not always as obvious. Well, uh, standard deviation does measure the extent to which they spread, the extent to which they might be higher, might be lower. Um, and so if you um, look on the next page to exercise five, above it there's a formula. I'll explain that after, well, I'll explain it with the example. But look at exercise five. The following are the likely returns from Project Z. The returns will either be 10%, 15%, or 20%, with probabilities 0 0.2, 0 0.5, 0 0.3. Well, let's first of all let, uh, calculate the expected value. Um, so the returns are 10, uh, 15, 20, probabilities 0 0.2, 0 0.5, 0 0.3, and for the expected value, Multiply and add, so what do we get? Uh, 2, 7.5, 6. The expected value, the average, is 15.5. Now, just putting symbols to it, and then when we've done the next bit, I can produce a formula. Uh, I'll call the returns x. P is the probability, and so to get the expected value or the average, we simply multiplied P times X, and we added up. And that expected value is also known as the mean, the average. Uh, the symbol is X bar. X with a bar over the top is the average of the X's. Well, that's fine. The average is 15.5, but again, it may be higher, it may be lower. We want a measure of the spread. And so let's see what the spread is, what the difference is in each case. Uh, if I compare each return with the average, or x minus x bar, the first one, 10%, as against 15.5, is minus it's 5.5 below the average. 15 minus 15.5, it's minus 0.5 below the average. At 20, it's above the average, it's plus 4.5. So there are the deviations, the differences from the mean. 
I want to know the average difference. Well, if, the one problem is, if we took the average as they stand, uh, you know, the expected value multiplied by 0 0.2, 0 0.5, 0 0.3, that wouldn't work. Because of the pluses and minuses, you try it if you want. But the average multiplied by probability to add up would come to zero, because some are above, some are below. And so to remove the sign of problem, what we do is square those differences. Because if you square them, they all become positive. And then we take the weighted average by multiplying by the probability and adding up. So if I can find my calculator, here we are. Check me. But 5.5 squared... Multiply by the probability, because we're taking the weighted average, 0.2, I get 6.05. Next one, 0.5 squared. Multiply by the probability of 0.5, gives me 0.125. And finally, 4.5 squared times 0.3 is 6.075. They're all positive. A minus times minus is a plus. So, what's the total of those? It's 12.25. That's the weighted average, the expected value, the weighted average of the different, the squares of the differences away from the mean. Now, that itself is a measure of spread. The bigger the, um, the differences above and below the mean, the bigger that 12.25 would be. The only problem, though, is the units. In that here, the returns were in percents. The differences were in percents. But because I've squared them, that 12.25 is sort of squared percents. Well, it doesn't matter what you put in. Maybe we put in dollars, if the returns were all in dollars. The differences would have been dollars. But when we squared them, we'd end up with the squared dollars. And so to get back to the same units, the standard deviation that was 12.25 squared percentages. Again, to get to the same units, we now take the square root. And so the square root of 12.25 um, is 3.5. And now we are back to percents. Or again, had the original figures been in dollars, we'd now be back to dollars. So that's the standard deviation. And all right, as a formula, what did we do? We took x minus x bar. We squared, multiplied by the probability and added them all up, which is what sigma means. So the sum of p x minus x bar squared, that's the 12.25. But then to get back to the same units, oops, we took the square root. So there you are, that's that formula that's above the example. Now one last thing, you'll see mb in the illustration, in the exercise, coefficient of variation. <coughs> Although that 3.5 is a measure of how much the spread is, is that a big spread or a small spread? What I'm getting at, you see, if, um, if our expected values, if these had all been 80%, 90%, 95%, 3.5%, 3 but if we've been talking about something like 3, 4, and 5%, 3.5% is very big. So 3.5% on its own doesn't mean an awful lot. So to get an idea of how big it is, you've got this coefficient of variation. Which is, you've got it there, standard deviation, which is 3.5%, divided by the mean, 15.5% which is 
0.226, or if you prefer, 22.6 percent. It doesn't matter. Yeah. But it, it just gives an, an idea of order of magnitude of how big um, a deviation of 3.5 percent actually is. OK, one more bit to look at. We'll do that in the next, the final lecture on uh, this chapter.